My name is Philip Hodge. I'm a physician with Southeastern Neurosurgical and Spine Institute, part of the Greenville Hospital System, and I'm here to, here to talk to you today about lumbar spondylolisthesis, one of the most common reasons that patients have a lumbar spinal fusion. Lumbar spondylolisthesis is a condition where there's actually a slippage of one vertebra upon another. This most commonly happens at the junction between the, the lumbar spine and the sacral spine, or at the L5, S1 level. This can cause several symptoms. The most typical symptoms are back pain and often leg pain. Patients will have this condition for many years and will come to medical attention primarily when the pain becomes so intractable that it disrupts their daily life. And this can be either back pain or leg pain. As part of the workup for lumbar spondylolisthesis, the patient will, also, will often have regular x-rays which will demonstrate the slippage of the vertebra. Other tests that are performed can be CT scans and MRIs, which give us much more detail of the bony anatomy as well as the relationship of the bones and soft tissues of the spine to the nerves. Occasionally, more invasive tests such as myelograms followed by CT scans are done to give us more information. Once the diagnosis is made, the treatment depends on this, primarily on the severity of symptoms. Patients are often managed in the most conservative or the least invasive way possible because patients can be, often be successfully managed without surgery. So early on in the disease process, patients will often be treated with physical therapy, anti-inflammatory medication, and muscle relaxants. If this fails, patients may then be offered or suggested to, um, to have an epidural steroid injection. Epidural steroid injections put a concentrated dose of anti-inflammatory medication into the spinal canal right next to the nerves in an effort to treat the inflammation caused by uh, the compression related to the anatomic abnormality. A patient may have one of these or several of these depending on how effective the first injection is. If this fails and the, pain, and the patient's symptoms are disruptive to their lifestyle, then surgery is often offered to the patient. The most common surgery done for this condition is a lumbar laminectomy with spinal fusion and fixation. And to simplify this, there are basically three parts of this procedure. There is a decompression where the a laminectomy is done as well as sometimes a discectomy to decompress the nerves and treat the leg symptoms. Following this decompression, Following the decompression and the treatment of the leg pain, the spine is reconstructed with spinal fusion, which is actually the laying, the laying down of bone uh, in particular areas of the spine, whether it be in the disc space or around the periphery of the spine, to create a, se a stable segment. In order to hold this segment in place while the bone heals, Spinal instrumentation or spinal fixation is often performed using pedicle screws and rods. This procedure can be done in an uh, open fashion or minimally, invasion, minimally invasive uh, fashion. And in my practice, it's most commonly done in a minimally invasive fashion. The procedure itself tends to take approximately three hours, and the patient spends uh, two to three days in the hospital. The recuperation time tends to be 8 to 12 weeks, but uh, 
as early as post-operative day one, patients are encouraged to get up, walk around, and try to participate in as many activities of daily living as possible. My patients find, or approximately 95% of my patients find that their leg pain resolves with this procedure. The back pain is often improved with spinal fusion, but the, the relief of back pain is not typically as great as that relief of the leg pain. Thank you.